Well, good morning, everybody. Greetings in the name of the Lord. Uh, this is the Bible Fellowship Church of Denville, and I'm Pastor Harris, and we're so glad uh, that you could be with us here this morning to uh, as we pra- as we get ready for uh, Christmas, Christmas Day, and as we celebrate that, uh, we rejoice in the Lord of what He's going to do uh, in and through us throughout this season. And as you notice in our announcements, our Christmas Eve uh, service will be a virtual uh, service. We will be online on Christmas Eve at 8 o'clock. That would be Thursday uh, on December 24th. So uh, we invite you to come and uh, see uh, together and worship together uh, remotely. So as we begin our service today, let us bow together in prayer. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the joy that we have of knowing you in a personal way. And I pray that each and every one who is here today and those who are listening might have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ through faith. And I pray that your blessing will be upon us now as we worship you today. For it's in the name of Christ our Savior we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading uh, this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 1, 18 to 23, and I'd like you to join together with me as we uh, read the scripture, and I'd like you to stand uh, together with me for the reading of this passage. All together, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, Before they came together, she was found to be the child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, Do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. So let's turn in our hymnals. You can remain standing, number 244. Okay. Um. Next hymn, number 250, A Little Town 
of Bethlehem. From the Realms of Glory 259 in your hymn books. to have our ushers come forward for our morning offering.
Let's stand together for our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Father, thank you for this opportunity to give back to the work of the Lord. We pray for your blessing on this offering. May it be used to help bring people to a knowledge of the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, for it's in his precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, today's message is going to be taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. This is a story of the shepherds as they come uh, to the uh, place of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we had a video presentation there, and Wendy did a great job pray, playing for us on that one. We thank you for that very much. And as we think about uh, this passage, we want to read, uh, I'd like you to read together with me <clears throat> the entire passage. I trust you can see that well. And uh, just say, read along with me, please. <clears throat> and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which they were just as they had been told. Now, this morning, as we uh, look into this passage, uh, we're going to see divine intervention into the human experience. And uh, the first thing that we see in this image in our mind's eye of the shepherds being uh, approached by the angels of God as uh, the, the, uh, they were terrified. They were terrified, the Bible, the Bible tells us. And what were they ter terrified of? Well, uh, first of all, uh, angelic appearances were not the normal thing of that of any any time in the history of the Bible, or, or even to this very day. We we listen to the stories of angelic appearances in the Old Testament, and the New Testament as well, but they were few and far between. And it was something that none, I am sure, of these shepherds had ever seen before. So they were, they were terrified of the unknown. They were terrified of the unseen. And uh, they were just shaken to their, to their bones. Uh, I need to tell you a story. When my brother and I were terrified, uh, when I was about two or, well, probably about three or four, my brother was... Uh, five or six, <clears throat> my father de uh, decided to play Santa Claus in our house in Mare Avenue in Buffalo, New York. He put up an extension ladder on the side of the house, 
and uh, our, our bedroom was the, uh, the second story, and he had a bunch of jingle bells, uh, you know, those great big ones, you know, that you shake them, and they just put them around their neck of the reindeer and stuff like that. And my brother and I actually believed the stories that Santa Claus was going to land on the roof, come down the chimney, and, you know, give us all his gifts and stuff, and, of course, drink the, the cookies and beer that were left on the mantle, for Santa Claus was gone in the morning. Imagine that. And uh, my, my father, uh, unknown to us, you know, crawled up the, the ladder, and, and he started shaking the bells of them, singing, ho, 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 Santa Claus is here. And the ladder started to scrape across the side of the house. It was falling down, and he hit the veranda. Some of you remember what a veranda is. It's a little porch on the outside of your house. He hit the veranda, tumbled out off the ladder, ended up on the roof. The ladder went flying and ended up on the ground. So my brother and I were, of course, we're thinking, Santa Claus has landed. We heard his sleigh on the roof and, and the crash of the reindeer and everything. This is, we better get under the cover so nobody sees us. And then we heard Santa's voice saying, Dorothy, help me. <laughs> and we said, we said, my goodness, Santa knows mother's name, Dorothy. That's, that's, it's got to be the real thing. And boy, did we get to sleep fast after that. But we were terrified at first when, when we heard this. And of course, later on, we, hold, we heard the real story of what happened. And uh, it, was, it was quite interesting. But these, these um, uh, shepherds in the field who were just doing their job, they were tending to the sheep in the field at night. You had to have somebody watch the sheep so uh, wolves or other predators would not uh, come and steal the sheep uh, and uh, so forth. So they were just going through their normal activity of what they always do. And the angel of the Lord, the Bible tells us, appeared uh, to them. And we find in the text of the scripture, if you, if you uh, uh, notice this in Luke chapter 8, that I'm in Matthew. Okay, so we'll get to Luke. That's a good idea. In Luke chapter uh, uh, 8, it's in uh, chapter 2, verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Now notice in verse 9, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. They were terrified. And uh, what do we see happening at this moment in history, this very significant moment in history, the night that Christ was born. We see that the miraculous happens. The angels reveal themselves to humankind. That in itself is a miracle in itself that, that, that they would do that. Secondly, God's glory is not only seen with the, with the light that shone, shone around the angel, but uh, the, the sound of his voice. We can only imagine what that, what that would be. Uh, we're not told uh, in great detail or in detailed description of how the voice sounded or how uh, bright the light was or anything else. Uh, this uh, last year, I bought myself a 4,000 lumen light for the garage. A normal light bulb is like about 150 lumens, 200 lumens. This is 4,000 lumens. I put it in my tiny little garage, plugged it in. It was so bright, I almost blinded myself. Uh, so I had to wear a hat so that uh, wouldn't the light wouldn't get into my. So that went out into the shed. But uh, the light that shone around the angel, the Bible tells us, must have been stunning, must have been something that just put them back on their heels. And they heard his voice, and the message uh, came from uh, the angel of God. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. 
He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. And now notice at verse 13. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. I've often thought about that. <clears throat> Why didn't the angels just reveal themselves all at once? Probably because they would have all had heart attacks, you know, to see that happen. So uh, one angel appears. They're totally frightened. They're terrified, the scripture tells us. And then after the message is given, the, the host of heaven, heaven itself, opens up and all of the angels are singing the glory of God that Christ Jesus has been born. The fulfillment of all the types of the Old Testament are finally come to fruition in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the babe, in the manger. And thirdly, the angelical, angelic messengers speak to the shepherds. All of this is a is in the realm of the miraculous. It's something that is so far out uh, from our understanding that we simply cannot understand. Him. This morning we want to see something of, a, of the divine intervention into human experience. A miracle takes place here. And the angels reveal themselves to men and God's glory is seen and heard. What a mighty miracle this must have been. Well, my first uh, thought on this passage is this. The basis of fearlessness is faith in Christ alone. What is it that takes away the fear and the terrified feelings that the, sh the shepherds had at this time? And what the scripture tells us what takes away that fear is the message that this Christ has been born for you, to you, so that he will take away the sin of his people. What good news is there? That, in essence, is the message of the gospel of Christ. Now, we need to review that again, don't we, to find out what exactly is the gospel the gospel is first realizing that we are sinners and in need of the Savior. And I'm sure that part of the terrified uh, feelings that the shepherds has was, I'm not ready for God to reveal himself to me in the, in, in the form of the angelic messengers. I'm not ready for that because I've got a long way to go to make up for my sins and to take the sacrifices to the temple, and uh, I need to make a confession before the Lord that is sincere and so forth. And I'm sure that's why they were terrified, because they weren't ready. And the question for you is, do you recognize that you are a sinner and in need of the Savior? And as we see the second thing of the gospel is that we realize that it is Christ alone who is able to take our sins away. It is Christ alone who can take our sins away from you. And this is something that takes away uh, their fear. And thirdly, we need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into our lives. As many as received him, to them, to them he gave the right to be called the children of God. And if you've never done that today, just Talk to the Lord right now in, 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 in just language that you know. It's no special language or anything. You just say, Lord Jesus, I, I'm a sinner and I know that. And Lord, I know that it is Christ Jesus alone that can save me. Lord Jesus, come into my life and I receive you into my life. And you begin a life of, the, of what we call the Christian. And true faith is something that we're talking about this morning is not just a theological concept or idea. It is something that enters into your heart through faith. We're saved by grace through faith. The Bible tells us this. Well, let me share a quote with you from F.F. F. Bruce, a 
uh, Anglican uh, clergy who uh, has, uh, is extremely influential all across the world in his Bible teaching and his evangelical fervor for the Lord. He says, the incarnation of the Son of God is indeed still the only foundation upon which real fearlessness towards the invisible, the hereafter, the divine and eternal may be based. I couldn't have said it better myself. But I'll tell you, that just uh, if you want to get that quote and write it down, um, later when you uh, see it up online, you'll be able to uh, read it again and maybe take a screenshot on your phone on that when it comes up, and then you'll have it on, on your phone. <clears throat> but the basis of fearlessness is faith in Christ alone. At verse 10, the angel says, fear not. In the King James, I like that better than any of the other translations. Some say don't be afraid. That, that sounds like too casual. But when the angel of the Lord says, fear not, uh, it, it, it has a ring to it. And the shepherds at this, at this point, let's talk about them for, for, a, for a moment. They were devout. They loved the Lord. And in verse 20 in the passage, we see that they all praised God together so they knew who God was. They praised him and they loved the Lord. Secondly, they were waiting for the promised Messiah. And uh, we see this in, the, in verse 11. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. So they were uh, obviously waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. And last of all, at verse 15, they were at first afraid, but they believed the good news. And we see that in verse 15, where the angel had left them and gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. It was unmistakable to those shepherds where that message came from. It was, it was undeniable truth uh, to them that they had, the angels had told them the truth and that they were on their way to see uh, what this happened. I don't believe that they said, well, let's go see if the angels are really telling the truth and we'll go to the manger and We'll see if anything's in there. No, it wasn't that at all. They believed the truth. They expected, they anticipated the, uh, the, the message to be true. And when they got to the, uh, the stable, they uh, were treated to a great uh, and joyful vision and uh, vision of, of Christ. And not a vision, but a, a, a vista, if you want to call it of what we see in the, in, the, um, in the Bethlehem. People today fear the unseen. They fear the spirit world. Uh, they fear the future. They fear the afterlife. The angel's announcement, beginning with fear not, is significant and relevant for all of us today. Everybody who hears this message. F.F. F. Bruce again says this, the incarnation of the Son of God is indeed still the only foundation upon which real fearlessness towards the invisible, the unknown, the divine, and eternal may be based. Without the coming of Christ, we should have had no assurance that God really exists as a personal God perfect in love and mercy. And we st should still have been overcome with fear as regards to the invisible, the hereafter, the divine and eternal. And my comment is the incarnation means that we no longer need to fear the invisible and unseen world. The basis of that fearlessness is in Christ, is faith in Christ alone. The angels' uh, tidings of great joy 
was the fact that Christ came to fulfill the promise of salvation for all of his children. What a wonderful truth we find in there. Secondly, we want to see the, the message of glory to God. He has given us true peace. The message that the angels gave ended up with a doxology. A doxology is a song of thanks. That's why uh, at the um, end of our offering, we sing the doxology. It is, a, it is a song of thanksgiving. And that is exactly what happens in the, all the, the host of heaven is singing glory to God in the highest. I wonder how long that took place. Was it a minute? Was it three minutes? Was it 10 minutes? Was it, we don't know how long it was. But one thing we do know is that the angels in heaven are so enthusiastic of their worship of, of, of God, and that as we should be as well, I'm guessing that their song went on for a pretty long period of time. And that's the way it should be with you and with me. And in Luke chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Now, I do want to uh, just clarify something in the text of the scripture itself. In the original language, which is the Greek of the New Testament, the idea of the translation of this is glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men of his goodwill. That is God's goodwill. In other words, God is pleased that people respond to him in faith and come to him. And the glory to God in the highest that the angels are singing is that individuals like you and like me can come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, realizing that we are sinners, we can't save ourselves, it is Christ alone who saves us, and we receive him into our heart. That's what the angels were singing about. Glory to God in the highest because people will come to the Savior and be part of the kingdom of God. It is not just a, a goodwill, a feeling of goodness or happiness at, uh, at Christmas time. It's much more than that. It is a relationship that has begun with the Lord Jesus Christ. The conclusion that I have for you, I'm going to shower you with a bunch of scripture verses now about the peace that God is uh, revealing to us through the angels, to us even to this very day. And um, uh, if you want to just jot down uh, some of the pers uh, Bible verses, you can, and then look at them later. But the Bible throughout the scripture, and this morning we're looking basically in the in the, only in the Old New Testament, describes the peace that the angels are talking about that is to come to those who know and love him. The first one is in Luke chapter 1, verses 77 through 79. Here we have the knowledge of salvation, the way of peace. And uh, let's read this verse together to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven. Great and beautiful poetic words of those who trust in Christ alone for their salvation. This, this thing that we call salvation or being born from above or born again is a t incredibly and amazing, wonderful reality for those who have trusted in Christ alone. And the, the most amazing thing of all is the fact that he forgives us of our sins. And notice the tender mercy of our God, the tender 
mercy of our God. <clears throat> A couple uh, months ago, uh, one of my grandchildren uh, was doing something, throwing something at his sister. You know, that's what two-year-olds do. And, and I said, I said, uh, I won't mention his name. I said, that's not, that's not good. You shouldn't do that. You know what he said? I saw we grandpa. I said, well, that, well, that melted my heart right there. I saw we grandpa. And uh, it's just an amazing thing. And then we, it's just like us. Unless you come to God as a child, the Bible tells us, you will not enter the kingdom of God. And we come to him saying, I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry for my sin. And God forgives you and wraps his arms around you. The second uh, part of that is to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. And that is Luke chapter 1, 77 to 79. What a beautiful uh, passage of scripture to enlighten us and en encourage us to accept and embrace the peace that God has brought to us. In John chapter 14, verse 27, this is one of my favorite preaching verses. John 14, 27. Let's say it together. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. We have the peace of God that dwells in our hearts because of what Jesus has done on the cross. The next passage is in John 16, verse 33. Read this together with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And you know what? That includes COVID, doesn't it? Our Lord Jesus has already overcome it. And as we uh, uh, progress through this very difficult and terrible time in our country and in our world, we know that our only hope is the Lord Jesus Christ, and we trust in him and love him no matter what. The next verse of scripture is Romans 5, one, another one of my favorites. Therefore, say it together, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Repetition is uh, something that God uses to, uh, to help us to remember. And there's times in our lives when we need to remember. There's times in our lives when we don't feel peaceful. There's times in our lives when we are feeling terribly upset and uh, I'm not sure where this word comes from, probably my mother, discombobulated. Uh, we feel that way, don't we? We feel like our world is upside down. So we need to remind ourselves often that Jesus Christ is our peace and that we've been justified by faith. Why? Because you've trusted in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation. And as a result of that, we have peace with God. There is no more uh, animosity uh, between us and God when God looks down from his throne and he looks at us, he does not see our sin, but he sees the blood of Jesus Christ that covers our sin. And that is such a joyful thing. And that alone should give us peace. Another verse is Ephesians 5 20, and verse 14. Let's read this together. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. There will not be peace in the Middle East or in the world until Jesus comes. The Bible tells us this. It is clear that it is Jesus alone who is the author of peace. He's the Prince of Peace. And I've preached on that uh, in past uh, years at Christmas time. But today, to think of the fact that he is our peace and uh, he breaks down not only the barriers between us and God, but, but destroys the barriers between us and other human beings. <clears throat> and this includes uh, racial 
tensions that, that uh, even are in the church today. It includes uh, all kinds of prejudices that we may have against other people. And why is that or how does this occur? It happens through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ because it says he himself, that is Jesus, is our peace. And if we have the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts and his spirit witnesses with our spirit that we are the children of God and another person who is far different from you has been born again by the spirit of God and the spirit himself witnesses with his spirit or her spirit that they are the children of God. Guess what? We're in the same family. We belong to each other and there's no need for hostility between uh, human beings because the peace of Christ has come into our hearts. And the last passage is in Colossians chapter 2. We see at the beginning of the, of the uh, passage, uh, chapter uh, 1 and verse 2, it says, Grace and peace to you. And then at verse 13, he wraps up the, the introduction to that passage and he says for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves and tell me what is the kingdom of the son he loves characterized by answer the peace of god and philippians tells us about this the peace of god that passes all understanding that guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Well, the, we conclude today by asking you this question. Can you, this morning, sing with the angels of God in Luke 2.14? Glory to God. Let's, let's say this together. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Can you say that and sing with the angels this morning? Let's bow together. In prayer, Father, I do pray that your spirit would speak to our hearts, that you will move in a mighty and powerful way to make the peace of God the re a reality in all of our hearts. And for those this morning who may not have come to that realization that they are sinners and in need of a Savior, I pray that they this morning will realize that it is Christ alone and his peace that will come into our hearts. It is only because of Christ that we can have this salvation and that receiving him into our life and into our minds and souls and hearts that we will be peaceful in our hearts. And we thank you, Lord, for sending your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to save his people from their sins. And we thank you for this now in Christ's precious and holy name. Amen. Let's stand together for our closing hymn, number 243. Let's stand together. 
We'd like to thank you all for coming. You may be seated here. We're going to do our announcements, but we're glad that you could join us today online. And uh, we're glad that all of you who came today can uh, participate with us in worship today. May the Lord bless you, and may you have a great and wonderful, peaceful Christmas. And we'll say amen to that. Amen? Amen. amen.